Ladies and gentlemen, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of inspiration and realness. Also, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And now the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself from his Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Mr. Shenanigans himself and the two-time Chilling 3000 2022 End of the Year Awards winner, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977, episode 687 of the show. How's it going, everybody? Um, July the 4th, 2023, 3.15 p.m. How's it going? Everybody, hope you guys are having a wonderful July 4th, and um, hope you guys are blessed on, on this special day. If it's if it's nice where you're at, enjoy it. If it's not nice where you're at, try to, try to make, some, um, make something of the day, all right? So... Uh, it's been a crazy, um, crazy weather week, and you know they say thunderstorms and everything else. But I'm checking out the weather. Um, one thing, a little tidbit. I am. Um, I was almost gonna say that uh, for the upcoming shenanigans that I'm going to do on my on this channel, I am going to do videos from the Wayland City Festival. I thought oh, I have two days to do it, but not the case. Um, I'm, I'll be doing the three days: Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, I want to thank President Mike Sylvia, the president of the Wellington City Festival, for correcting me in uh, thinking that um, it, it was um, the festivals opened up at 4 o'clock on Friday, but not the case. It is going to be, it's just the, the carnival, the carnival portion of the festival that's going to be open at 4 on Friday and Thursday and Friday, not the rest of the festival. It's going to be open up at 12. I'm going to be there, and this will be the first time going to the Whalen Sea Festival in my new whip, the uh, 2023 Toyota Highlander. That I am, was really excited. I cannot believe I'm sitting in that car driving it, and it's just nuts. Let me tell you. So, and I might not be making an appearance. I'm not going to make an appearance on the final two episodes for Jody Scow's uh, live stream those two days because he says he starts at 12 um, each of the day. So. That's a, that's an um, that's the main thing that I would, uh, but um, I think I told him that, but uh, but if if not, I'll probably have to talk to him about it beforehand. Already then, uh, let's talk about what happened last night on Raw, the fallout for Money in the Bank, and uh, Seth Rollins is still the champion after defeating Finn Balor. Uh, kicks off Monday Night Raw to address the Baltimore crowd. Then Cody Rhodes interrupts him, thinking the story is going to continue. But he was about to say, "Well, Baltimore." Brock Lesnar's music hits. He comes out. Both men start brawling. And uh, and then Rhodes hits Lesnar with a cutter. Cutter with Lesnar uh, uh, repeating. Uh, hits Lesnar with a cutter. And with Re Lesnar retreating. Trouble already. I can tell. Now... The, now, Rollins came back uh, for a commercial break. Steph Rollins, the champ, still back in the ring. Judgment Day comes out without Finn Balor. And Damian Priest kind of warns him that um, he can catch this in at any time. And then uh, Shinsuke Nakamura went one on with Mr. Priest. Damian Priest did, uh, did pick up the victory. Meanwhile, Ronda Rousey, who was betrayed by Shayna Baszler at Money in the Bank, costing them the tag team titles against... Liv Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez, she had some answers, and Shayna Baszler basically comes out and says, listen, I had to work my way up to the top. You never went to NXT, you never you know, built the ring, you never paid your dues, they just put you right to WrestleMania. Next, that's what frustrated the heck out of Shayna Baszler. And so, and both went, and so Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler started brawling and fighting, and Rumor has it that Ronda Rousey may be leaving the WWE after SummerSlam. So I think they're working a program here to uh, they're working a program here to uh, basically um, to basically get that going. Um, so uh, Maxine Dupree and Alpha Academy were training and. <laughs> And let's say Maxine Dupree got he Otis in a headlock in a position where every guy wants to be in, if you know what I mean. If you, <laughs> if uh, including myself, of course. Um, <laughs> Maxine Dupree is pretty. Uh, it's a pretty girl. And then they started training and they cut a promo on the Viking Raiders and Valhalla will be. Um, they will be involved in a six-person tag match. 
so uh, so there's so so there's that. Um, the Raquel Rodriguez uh, and Liv Morgan are sitting at ringside to prepare for a tag team number one contenders tag team turmoil match. The winning team gets a shot at Rodriguez and Liv Morgan, the new champs. Now it started off with uh, you know Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville versus the team of Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae. Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville eliminated Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae. Next team that came in, Emma and Nikki Cross. And thanks to Nikki Cross's distraction, I think she wanted to be teaming up with Candice LeRae and all that, Emma and Nikki Cross with the second team eliminated. Then it was Dana Brooke and Tegan Knox that were next against Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green. And Dana Brooke and Tegan Knox were eliminated next. Then the final team, the former NXT Women's Tag Team Champions, uh, Katana Chance and Gaten Carter, and uh, and Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville ended up winning that turmoil matchup to become number one contenders for the WWE Undisputed Women's Tag Team Championship. Now Bronson Reed cuts a promo on the competition, how he's you know, he's a nice guy to he step in the ring with him and all that. So. Becky Lynch addresses the Baltimore crowd and she calls and she calls out Trish Stratus. Trish Stratus and Zoe Stark showed up and Trish Stratus has that face protection that she wore back in what 2004 and said, "Hey, we're not going to fight you now. In fact, you can fight Zoe Stark next week and Becky Lynch goes fine. I'm going to kick your butt and then uh, one of these days I'll get my hands on you in the ring." Jackie Redman, who has been the new Raw, Raw correspondent, interviewed Cody Rhodes and Cody and Cody Rose uh, declares war on, on Brock Lesnar, basically. Then uh, the six man, a six person tag Alpha Academy and Viking Raiders, and it was it was a uh, victory roll by Maxine Dupree uh, that gave Alpha Academy the victory over the Viking Raiders. And Jackie Redman interviews Ricochet, and Ricochet decides to address Logan Paul and challenges him to go face to face with him next week. So there. And then the women's title match was supposed to happen. Um, Ray Ripley and Natalia, and Natalia attacks Ray Ripley before the title match. I want to congratulate Natalia. She has set the record for um, six records of, of the Guinness Book of World Records, and uh, so uh, I'm going to look that up for just a second here because, uh, uh, oh boy. And uh, just to let you know, uh, yep, yeah. she received these six world records at Money in the Bank, and uh, so let's see if um, cause I went. Cause I'm trying to list off the record uh, before beforehand, and uh, and. Uh, Let's see. Most WWE matches as, as a, fe- a female with 1,514 1, matches as a female. Most WWE wins in a career, 663 wins. Most WWE um, premium live appearances or pay-per-view appearances at 75. Most WWE WrestleMania appearances as a female at at 8. Most WWE Raw matches uh, as a female, uh, 174, and most WWE SmackDown matches at 200, and uh, so this is gonna. Um, uh, she wore her first. Um, she was. She got her first Guinness World Records title back in 2001, where she featured for the 68th time on pay per view at Survivor Series. So, so that is a record, and. Um, all right, you know, I got a, nick, a new nickname for Natalia, the Guinness Goddess, you know. So, that's that's why I'm... So, anyways, uh, Ray Ripley picked up the victory over Natalia after an awesome match. But then Ripley decided to attack Natalia after the match. But Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez faced Ripley away. And Raquel Rodriguez is standing, you know, staring down at Ray Ripley. Is it Raquel Rodriguez is wanting me going for the double gold, so to speak? Tommaso Ciampa earlier uh, cut a promo on The Miz. The Miz responds to Ciampa. No disqualification match next week. Ray Ripley, after she recovered her um, uh, recovered from that matchup, was confronted by EO Sky, the new Miss Money in the Bag. And she says, I can cash it in. He says, you do that, and it'll be the biggest mistake of your life. Do you think EO Sky's afraid of you, Rhea? Anyways. 
And then Dirty Dominic Mysterio, that's, when, that's why I think that's what he's going by now. Dirty Dom, uh, Dominic Mysterio was talking to Ripley, and then Priest asked about Balor's, Finn, uh, Finn Balor's whereabouts, and he said, yeah, I haven't talked to him all day. So, and, uh, so there's that, so there's, uh, so there's that, um, and so Priest says he's vowing to cash that money in the bank in when he gets a chance. Matt Riddle went one-on-one with Giovanni Vinci, and uh, Matt Riddle didn't end up winning the matchup. But Imperium, uh, the rest of Imperium, that's Gunta, the Intercontinental Champion, and uh, Ludwig Kaiser attacking him at the match. But then Drew McIntyre got involved and fights Imperium off. Byron Saxon does interview Drew McIntyre, and Matt Riddle says, hey, thanks for thinking. Hey, why don't we do this? We go out, get some pints. How about we go to Jimmy's? And like Jimmy Seafood, because uh, they were in Baltimore, fans went nuts of that. So pints and Jimmy's, that's that's what they were going for. Pints and Jimmy's. <laughs> I can imagine our truth going. I didn't know little old Jimmy owned a seafood restaurant. <laughs> Uh, you know what I should do? I should Photoshop Jimmy Seafood with our truth on it and put a meme. I didn't know little Jimmy <laughs> owned a restaurant. Anyways, um, Seth Roll- the main event, Seth Rollins, the World Heavyweight Champ, goes one-on-one with Dominic Mysterio. But then Damian Priest got um, got involved during the matchup, choke slamming Rollins with the South of Heaven. Rollins wins by DQ, and then they continue out uh, matchup. Rollins fights back. Then Dominic's attacking Rollins, and then tells Priest to cash in. And then as, Do- as Damian um, Priest was about to cash in, Finn Balor attacked Rollins, running him into Priest. And then... And then... Afterwards, Rollins decided to fight Dom while Priest and Balor were arguing. And Rollins escapes with the World Heavyweight title as Ray Ripley and Dom were pretty upset with the two of them. Hey, Judgment Dummies, if you had not kicked out Edge as your leader, Edge would have been your leader. He would have known what to do. He was a Money in the Bank winner. If you idiots had not kicked out Edge, maybe you wouldn't be in this position right now arguing with each other. I got a, I got a weird feeling that... That Damien and Priest may fail to cash in the money in the bank. And then, possibly, 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 it could end up being Judgment Day going kaput. And I think Dominic Mysterio and Ray Ripley can go one one way, being the um, the love romantic version of Beavis and Butthead, Diarrhea and Dum Dum. That's why I'm calling them. So... <laughs> so. That's my personal opinion. That's all the time we have on this show. Episode 687 of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Um, next up will be the 43rd edition of Trebek Tuesday. Um, a little bit of high rollers for you. I'm going to try to upload this video. And then I'm going to check out the game. The Red Sox are playing right now. They're down 4-1. Um, so there will be a lot of things going to be happening. Um, so I will explain that on the next on the next episode. So until that next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, please take us home. That is all for today's episode of the show. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget production. And in association with... A sweet both of raving dingleberries, telepictures, and distribution. Thank you for watching another great episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Until the next episode, goodbye for now.